Hello, 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 hello. This is Brit with Truth Be Told Podcast, and I have a good episode for you guys today. Um, I have episode number 23 with Laura Onizuka. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad that you're on the show. I'm just so glad that I met you. I'm just glad that we are talking today I miss you guys oh my gosh I know the feeling <laughs> <is> cool <laughs> Francis is gonna make an appearance here yeah you have to tell us and who else do we have with us today so we're also joined by Francis the cat who likes Hi, to be Francis. wherever the action is <laughs> <laughs> she'll come and she is ready for the camera she knows the spotlight so I love it that's right she matches your decor too. <laughs> but now I'm gonna go ahead and get started today. This episode is actually we're talking about. Um, it's called "I Am All That and Then Some." Um, what made me think of that was because we were discussing when we were in book club. Uh, we did talk about this lovely book. I don't know if you can see it. Oh my gosh! I have to tell you guys, I'm on YouTube right now, guys, but. If you're new to this channel, make sure you like, subscribe, and share, um, and let us know what we can improve on or what you like or what you don't like. I love all the feedback I've been getting, but with this book, it's called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford, and this was just one of the books that in Sean's book club that just kind of just wowed me. I never knew, Laura, that a book club, I, this is my first book club. And so I didn't know what to expect. It's funny how I ran upon Sean. I was going through something, but, you know, during that time. And so I, I walk in the mornings. And so I start listening to podcasts and he came across, um, one of his ads came across and they were talking about personality isn't permanent. That's my favorite book too. And so, <laughs> and so I said, okay, okay, um, let me see what this book is all about or let me see what this book club is all about and the more that we dive into different books the more layers peel back like the more that things will just explain to me why my brain is functioning the way it is and so in the last episode um we'll get on that but before I get into that I want to talk more about you I'm sorry Laura I got kind of excited because I love this book I know <laughs> Yeah, it, it definitely is a book that makes you reflect. Oh, all of them from the book, his book club do that, but this one, you go deep into the personal stuff. So I know. No, I'm actually excited to see what he's going to do with the next book club. So I'm waiting to get an email or see what he's doing. And I know you guys are loving Boss Brain. And so. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, I think the next one is going to be more business oriented, but okay. you know. He may change his mind. So okay, okay. I guess we'll see. But I guess let's go back to Miss Laura. So Laura's doing all types of different things. Um, she is definitely an entrepreneur. Um, and where are you located at, Laura? I'm on the West Coast in Portland, Oregon. Ah. Born and raised. Yeah. How is the weather? Rainy. <laughs> it's it's rainy here rainy. too. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in High Point, North Carolina. And so it's raining. It's it's probably about an hour from Charlotte. And so it's 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 just muggy. It's one of those days. It's rainy, but kind of warm there, right? It's not warm today. North Carolina is so weird. Like yeah. one day you'll have on flip-flops, the next day you'll have on like a big pullover or like a big jacket. Like it's winter, summer, all the seasons in one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually been kind of like that here too. So Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what God is doing, but I'm just going to let him do it. <laughs> but yeah, so Laura's, she's an entrepreneur and let us know what else you're doing. You're also, am I saying it right? As a flamenco dancer? Instructor? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's kind of my main gig is flamenco and mostly teaching. And also I take people to Spain to study. So I take them to study. Um, um, kind of boutique flamenco tours where you get to go to Spain to the heart of flamenco and study with some of the best teachers and just really 
it's flamenco is a way of life so you get to experience that way of life for one or two weeks and just be immersed in the culture be immersed in the art form and learn to dance oh, along wow. the way and i also teach online classes um with flamenco and do workshops in person I actually have a workshop coming with a uh coming up in may with a guest artist from spain right here in portland the first one since covid so i'm super excited for that congratulations thank you that is exciting. I didn't know you were taking people to Spain. Okay, tell me a little bit more about that. What made you get into this type of dance? And um, how can you get more information about the program? Yeah, thank you. Well, you can find out everything you need to know at experienceflamenco.com, my website. And basically, I, you know, I was watching, I saw a little video of flamenco dancing and it was when I was in my early 20s and I just went, what, I have to do that. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but it spoke to me, Brittany. It just, I felt it. So I said, I'm going to go to Spain someday and I'm going to do that. And so I did a couple years later and studied, kind of started my journey. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I stayed there for about a year, worked, took classes, and then I, uh, had to come home and have, you know, a normal life and right. get a normal job and all that stuff. And then it was 10 years past and I went back and kind of started studying again. And um, one time I was there and I felt so alone, like I was just studying by myself, kind of lost and confused. And I, I just thought, I want to be here with friends. I want to be all of us together. I want to be learning together and supporting each other. And then I went, why don't I just organize that like I could make this happen and that's sort of how I started doing the trips it was just from a deep desire and it was something I wanted and I thought if I want this other people want this that's crazy so that's your way of serving and giving back one of your ways um yeah. and so it it sounds like it's fulfilling you exactly yes yeah. guys you gotta check her out like I love your Instagram like when I'm in a funk or I just need to, I like learning different stuff. So when I went, came across your page, I was like, I don't remember Laura talking about that in book club. Like, I, I was like, yeah, where was I at? Yeah, <laughs> doesn't come up, but it's, but I'm so glad you like it. It's actually, Sean's got me on there teaching steps and it's been really fun doing the reels and. Yes, uh, please keep doing that. You're definitely inspiring us. And it's just, like I said, it's something different. People, I, I gravitate to different stuff. I've always been somebody like, oh my gosh, I want to learn that. Or, oh my gosh, I want to do that. My husband's always like, baby, like, you know, figure out what do you want to do? And that's what made me start, the, you know, the podcast because I was like, okay, I'm always talking, but I want to talk in a way that I can hopefully people can understand my voice and just give back and serve. So I just commend you on doing what you're doing as far as, instructing and is there a move or something that you can show us today absolutely like sitting I, down or something that'd be awesome um i just wanted to say really quickly i i think it's really good for um our spirit and our brain and just overall to learn new things so why not try a bunch of you know what i mean it's good for us to, we don't have to commit to every single thing we want to learn about but it's fun to to do and it's good for us so um yeah, and I love that you're doing this podcast. I think it's great. Thank so, you. I'm going to go to your website when I get out because I'm like, oh my gosh, I did not know she did that. Like, <laughs> okay, let me go look. Yeah. You know, like in the book club, we're really talking about this personal stuff oftentimes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, although, you know, flamenco is something personal to me, but doesn't didn't always fit into the conversations. But let's, yeah, let's do a little move. Okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe you can teach your husband later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or your kids. I think that your um, your daughter will like it. She'll love it. I can't wait to show her the replay. <laughs> so, okay. We'll just do kind of something fun that you could do sitting down. So we're going to start with the clap because in flamenco, we do a lot of um, percussion with our bodies and mm -hmm. with our feet and also like movements of the hands and things like this. But we're going to do some body percussion. So we go clap and then 
We're going to do it. Let me see if I... See, now Francis, the cat, is sitting on my lap. I was going to kind of speed up. But... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so then we'll go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, three four. 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 As one, I... two, three, four. That's right. So we go da, da, ka, da, da. Da, da, ka, da, da. And I think it helps to say it. The sound is da, da, ka, da, da. Da, and then one more clap. So it starts okay. with a clap and ends. Da, okay. da, 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 da. Da. Good. And I, you could do either side too, whatever is more comfortable. Uh, okay. Let me go, let me think for a second. What's the rhythm? Da, 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 da. Oh, okay. Da, 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 da. da? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put the hands out to the side mm -hmm. and open and then in. Ah! <laughs> that was good. And you just kind of, it's like you're um, picking a piece of fruit. Yeah. Picking it off the tree. That's what you're doing with the hand going in. So you're out and then you go in. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> and then the last part, out. Oh, you're good. <laughs> you dance look good too. So the whole thing is da da ka da 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 bam the bam 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 ole. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. <laughs> No, that's awesome. See, you learn something every day. I was excited for this interview because I was like, <laughs> I'm going to get her to show me a move. <laughs> oh my gosh, I would show you moves all day long and people would just get bored though. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so also tell us about your virtual day spa. I want to thank you so much. Um, I saved it. I was going to do it. I went to Pigeon Forge. And I was going to do it with the girls. I told them about you. Um, they definitely was excited. It was like, is she going to do a virtual day spa like soon? Like something live? And I was like, I don't know. This is just something something else new and brilliant that she's <laughs> doing. And I just want to thank you so much. Oh I still God. have it. Um, I don't ever really get a lot of alone time, Laura. And so when I got this and I was in Pigeon Forward, I was like, and they started getting on my nerves. Because, you know, girls get catty. And when they started getting on my nerves, I was like, I'm not even going to experience this with you guys, but you guys see it and I'll take it home and experience it with my daughter. So she was like, mama, we're going to do it after the interview and then we could just show Laura. And I was like, yeah, we'll just show Laura that way because yeah, like I just wanted to be back in my serenity and just. <laughs> we all need uh, time to ourselves and mm -hmm. doing whatever activity that could be different activities but yeah and sometimes it's just for yourself or sometimes like you said with a friend or right. daughter um but i love pampering myself when i you know and it just feels good even if it's just like five minutes mm -hmm. and so um yeah what i sent you is well we could do a virtual spa night let's yes. do it yes. i would love to do that with yes. you and I, I would love to yeah, because I remember you saw my story and I think it said, do you want to know about the next one? And you were like, yes. And so I thought, well, I can just say, you can just have your own, whatever right. you want. But um, so I, yeah, so my side gig, I guess <laughs> you would call it, is as an independent consultant with Beauty Counter, which is a clean skincare and makeup cosmetics company. Mm -hmm. And it's been really fun. It wasn't something I ever saw myself doing kind of a salesperson, although you do that with your own business, no matter right. what I chose. But I just, I really love the products. I really love, like I said, I like, I, I was always into skincare mm -hmm. and I love that the products are clean and they are really interested in responsible sourcing and paying close attention to the supply chain and where the ingredients are coming from, which is important to me as a consumer. So mm -hmm. it was a brand that I wanted to support. And it's actually really fun because I love having like a spa night, especially during COVID. And I had just started doing this right before COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So I started having these spa nights where we would just, get, I would send people the samples. We'd get together on Zoom and we'd do little facials. Oh gosh, <laughs> and, that's awesome. 
Yeah, like do some self uh, massage and just kind of girl time, but although mm -hmm. guys could do it, I suppose, but right. I think girl time, you know, and just a moment for ourselves with luxurious feeling products that are good for you. And then mm -hmm. your skin is feeling really soft and you feel relaxed. So, right. I love, I actually have um, a friend that uses their, their stuff. So I was actually surprised when I seen it come through the mail because I was like, oh my gosh, like they're really clean, you know, natural brand that just like, like your face looks great. Um, and every time we see, I see you on camera, whether you have makeup on or not, you're natural or not, it's just always, you know, vibrant. So I know skincare definitely plays a big role in that. Thank but, yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we take care of our skin, it shows, and there's so many ways to do that besides just the products, but um, yeah, yeah, I, I had to learn that too, I, I definitely, um, I drink a lot more water now, and like I said, I just pay attention to my body more, um, with this particular episode, I was thinking, it's funny that we're talking about all of this, because the last episode, it talks about, like, forgiving yourself. And in this episode is pretty much letting you know to own all of those traits. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember when we were in book club and we got to chapter six and it was like a really big eye opener for me. That's what made me like go there with you. So I was like, oh, yeah, Laura, you, you'll get it. Even though we haven't talked about it in a while, you'll once you go back to it like it. We talk about this. It's OK. And so. <laughs> And so I just remembered us doing a list and I just remember so much about this book. But before I go any further, can you tell us the definition of owning, like owning oneself? What does that mean to you? Yeah, well, thank you, because that was kind of um, interesting. I wasn't sure, you know, at first when you asked me to do the podcast, what what exactly we were going to talk about. And so when you brought up this book. Um, and this chapter, I was like, oh, because actually, I think on the last book club, Sean was asking what were people's kind of favorite books and what were ones they didn't like. And um, for me, this, I don't know if I would call it a favorite book, but it was one of the favorite topics to go right. into. Mm -hmm. um, what she dealt with in the book, it did sort of trigger me sometimes, but I think that's the point, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but it was funny because somebody said it was their least favorite book, but I I really appreciated this book and um so I was away out of town on vacation for a few days and I brought this <laughs> and I was reading it to my best friend because we were uh -huh. together and you know we were having discussions about it so it was good to revisit so thank you but my um definition of owning oneself I guess is really just accepting everything and because I think when I was younger, I didn't want to accept the things that sort of like I should change or I believed were bad, you know, that had this kind of negative label. And from what I've learned and also what she's talking about in this chapter is just how important that acceptance is of myself and the situation that that's happening, other people, just in general. But that- you give me goosebumps when you're saying that because like I said it takes me back and it makes me think of like when I was little and still to this day I'm kind of like I don't want to say I'm the black sheep but uh, I was like the wild child mom always was like if somebody was calling from school like the principal or something she knew it was for me and not my sister or she would say like I you know I like to color my hair different ways um, I'm still a hippie in and out and she that drives her crazy um, she just I don't know I'm just very uh, I'm very I've always been very outspoken and what I realized in this chapter like when I even been going back before this chapter I realized like wow Brittany like that just makes you a part of who you are um and that's scary sometimes because when you look in the mirror, you don't always, it's hard to forgive yourself. And it's all, it's, sometimes it's just hard to own up to all of those traits. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, the reality is, is some of them are things that we would want to change. Some of them aren't because some are just, like you said, just 
maybe not part of the norm or what your family wants or whatever, but some of those traits are actually not good things, but it's, no. but it's like, if we don't look at them, they're still there. Right. And it makes you actually sit down and do the work. Uh, when I talk about, you know, this, my podcast is pretty much what we were learning, you know, empowerment. And then a lot of things that I've learned, you know, I didn't realize what I was learning, Laura, even before book club, I was always in something inspirational or always going through some type of trial and tribulation, just like all of us. But some of those lessons, I would just learn and be like, okay, Brittany, take a step back. Instead of beating yourself up, figure out what it was that you could have learned from that mistake. Um, and looking at this book in this particular tra- chapter, when we had to write down those traits, and even if you can't think of those, if you could think of some right now, um, when you're thinking about owning yourself and owning everything, I am all of that and then some. What are some of the traits that you still deal with that are hard to face each day? Well, I just I wanted to say, because you mentioned mistakes and like learning from mistakes. Um, I It makes me think of one of my most important flamenco teachers and he taught me because I feel like flamenco learning flamenco is also teaches me about life Mm -hmm. and uh, anyway one of the things that he taught me was you know you're going to make a mistake but don't make the same mistake twice and the point is learn from your mistakes and I just anyway so I just think that's no I love that I love this teaching Right. It's just like, cause otherwise you just keep, if you don't learn from it, we just keep making, I kind of like, you know, we make that same mistake over and over until we, until we learn from it and then mm-hmm. maybe we'll make it again. But, mm-hmm. um, but anyway, the, the list, yeah, the list isn't, it's not a pretty list, but <laughs> some of the, um, and I was looking to see if I could find the one I'd made before, but I couldn't find it. But some of the words that I came up with were rude and so the, I think the hard part of the list is that part where you go and you, you look at, well, where am I, where am I rude? Cause I don't want to be rude, but I, no. oh yeah. Uh-huh. I, <laughs> um, I have conceded, um, bad listeners. I don't, that's not really a descriptive word, but you know what I mean? Distracted, um, self-centered. These are the oh, things. Laura, I don't think like none of that of you. <laughs> Uh, judgmental. I'm really, I do realize I'm really judgmental of people who are judgmental, which is ironic. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, um, so it's funny you said that, like, I'm going to stop you right there. Um, please I had a funk. you were talking about some words and it just made me think of something I went through. Um, I kept something kept like popping up in my life like different traits I kept seeing within certain people that are close to me, but I didn't understand why it kept bothering me. Um, I didn't understand it. I would be like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know why rude was one of mine too. Oh, really? Um, Yeah, rude was disrespectful, um, mean Mm -hmm. sometimes. uh, And I just said ghetto. When I said ghetto, because that's what my mom used to call me all the time. And I, I think it's just, I don't think I'm ghetto, but if I see it, if I'm around it, Laura, like in my definition of ghetto, it's just, and I'm not trying to call my, my people ignorant, but sometimes just some, some of the stuff we say and some of the stuff, and I have to say my people because that's what I am. I'm black, you know? So that's all I can relate to. I can't relate to anything else. But that's what I'm referring to. I'm just going to give you a scenario. And I just really, when you were talking about those words, this person was demonstrating one of those words to me, but it just kept coming up. And I kept saying to myself, Laura, why does this keep bothering me? Because the person does get on my nerves and I know how to turn her on and turn her off. And like they said, go a little bit, stay lesser. (laughs) Right. I had to learn that and that's what I, I did, but I didn't understand why what she was doing was bothering me so much. And I just had to start. And, and whenever I was going through that, we were reading this chapter. Oh, wow. Was, yeah. Perfect. That's why it was, it, divine was just, timing. <laughs> it was divine timing. 
And I was just like, ooh, talk about the kettle calling the pot black. Like, listen to me. Like, this is me showing me I'm rude. I'm disrespectful. If you want to call it ghetto, whatever your definition of that is, Brittany, that's what she's showing. And that's what you don't like about you, certain traits. Where did you pick that up? My mom's always like, where did you pick that from? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. And I find it's interesting when looking at the words kind of um, in, in thinking, reflecting on well, where am I that way? Because we don't want to be, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we don't want to own that. And sometimes it's to other people and sometimes it's toward myself, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm. What do I'm you do when, when you, when you realize that it's towards yourself or how does that make you feel in the moment um, about those nasty traits? That's what I'm going to say we're referring to because everybody can say I'm joyful, I'm happy, I'm peaceful, I'm loving. Like in the mornings, Laura, I, I say affirmations in my declaration every morning. I get up and try to have my alone time, meditation time, and God time. But sometimes I'm saying them, but I don't always feel that way. You know, mm -hmm. I don't always feel I'm worthy, I'm lovable, I'm this, I'm that. I'm just like, okay, that's what I want to feel. It, sometimes it hasn't left my head to my heart yet. So um, how do you deal with those nasty feelings as you're going through the healing process and learning to trust your body? Yeah, I think, um, well, I wish I, I mean, I wish I were like a master at this stuff. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, I think we were both seeking that, um, growth right Be joining the, the the book club where we met each other mm -hmm. but i i think kind of it goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning of this part of the conversation that acceptance and just um to say okay so sometimes i'm rude mm -hmm. you know and i'm not gonna like if i deny it or don't look at it i feel like that's kind of the danger the danger zone and that accepting just going like acknowledge i guess acknowledgement first right mm -hmm. and then acceptance and then um compassion i feel like yes. that's the thing i for me that's the key is to have compassion like, even if it's something that i don't like and i wish weren't the case and obviously you can change that because we have the agency to act however we want so right um, that compassion for oh like just going back to what we were talking about the mistake just compassion like it's it's okay and mm -hmm. we move on and we're aware and we accept it and we own it and take responsibility and but have compassion along the way that to me is the biggest thing because i feel like when i don't do that that's when i go into like that's the when you that shame and that leads to the negative um, behaviors and unhealthy habits and all that you know that whole rabbit hole it's funny you said that because it just like i said it gave me chill bump because when i was reading it and now just talking about it again it always just sheds a little bit more off of me because like you said being compassionate towards somebody else when i read this chapter and then I looked, I looked at that person totally different, totally different. I was just like, oh, wow. Like, whatever I have going through me or whatever, that's me. Um, yes, you do get on my nerves. Now, that's just real. Like, <laughs> you get on my nerves. But whatever I'm reflecting off of you, I'm not going to let nothing, none of that bother me. I need to just focus on what I can control. And like you said, move on and accept that. And that's just a big thing. And, so, and it's, it sounds cliche, Laura, but sometimes it's just hard to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's just hard to do. Do you, do you feel like um, she triggers you less or is it the kind of thing where you just don't spend as much time with? I don't spend as much time. Because yeah. um, the, there are triggers. Um, it's just stuff that I see and stuff that I, it's not going to change and it's okay. But what I've learned through book club and through personal development is I can't focus on what I can and can't change. Um, when I got married, I, I learned a lot. Me and my mom, were not as close, but once I got married, we got a little closer because as far as me listening to her, she might think I don't listen to her, but because she's been there, done that, 
um, I'm like, okay, mama, you know, she tells me stuff and I listen. She, she doesn't kind of play size or any of that. And she doesn't get in our business and I'm just grateful for her, but she teaches me a lot just being older. And like I said, it's funny, like the older you get, you think you stop growing, but you're still learning stuff <laughs> yes. about yourself. <laughs> Laura, what is something that you could tell the audience today? I know we said a mouthful. Um, and uh, I, I took a lot about what you said as far as accepting and owning, but I like to, I always try to talk to the avatar of the podcast and just which is a younger version of us and even an older version of us, what, what is something that you can tell them as far as owning all their traits as they're growing? What's the takeaway from that? Gosh, well, that makes, that kind of makes me feel emotional because I love that uh, question. And I really love who you're speaking to in this podcast, because that's the key, right? I think um, getting these, these messages when when we're younger and I think about like um, the young people who I mentor and my nieces and things um, it when I think about where I was as a younger person and how um, just going back to this this word rude how really rude I was to myself you know mm -hmm. um, it's sad it makes me sad and so to think of anybody treating themselves in that way, especially younger people, it just, it, it makes me, you know, it makes me really emotional because we do so much damage. And so I guess I would say, um, I don't know. I hope that, 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 that you don't judge yourself for the things you do that you, you think are bad and maybe they are, they really could be right. But, mm -hmm. um, I hope that instead of blaming or just get being mean, you can acknowledge it, have some compassion for yourself, make a better choice, but with love and it's okay because we all make mistakes and, we're, and we all have things that we, we're not perfect and we're human beings and we have, um, you know, fortunately or unfortunately it's, that's what we have to contend with, right? I love that. I, I love that. As you were talking, it just gave me goosebumps. So you weren't just talking to the younger crowd. I definitely took that in. And I appreciate I'm everything. To too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm like, oh my gosh, Laura, thank you. You said everything I need you to say. And um, I, I appreciate you. Again, let the audience know where we can find you at on social media. Thank you, Brittany. I appreciate you too. I really do. And I'm so excited for you. I, um, I just think it's so cool. I remember you talking about, you know, wanting to do something when you joined the book club. And it's, I just think it's amazing. Like you're, you're doing it. You've been super consistent. And uh, I haven't even listened to your recent podcast. It's okay. Going on, but I, the first ones, it was just, I just think it's it's great what you're doing. I love that you're following your intuition and your heart and putting out this great message. So thank you. Thank and you. Thank you for inviting me <laughs> to join and, and so much fun to get to talk with you a little bit more. Um, but anyway, all that said, you can experience flamenco.com is my website. And then if you're interested in the the Instagram it's you can find it experience flamenco or my first name if you wanted those little lessons that Brittany was talking about and then if you're interested in the beauty counter stuff the skincare or makeup that I can just give you a link Brittany that we can put in yeah do that people. love that <laughs> for my my name but and I'm happy to always give people samples and all that stuff. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything. Um, thank you for coming on today. Uh, guys, make sure you tune in to this episode. Make sure you like, so like, share, and subscribe. We are signing out with episode number 23. I am that and all that and then some. <laughs> with Miss sure. Laura Onizuka. Thank you so much today. Oh, I appreciate thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So much. <laughs>